Hello guys and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program 2 video and in this video we are doing something new we will be touching the sun yeah that sounds really weird we're going to go to Kerbal basically the sun we're gonna go to the sun we're gonna go touch the sun we're gonna feel the sun we're gonna endure the sun yeah that's excessive but that's because um i had another video in plan that's also why this video is actually coming out on monday instead i think i don't know i'm recording this on sunday even though usually i get my videos out on saturday because yes um yeah because it's most convenient for me but this time i got it out on monday because i had another video in plan but it was supposed to be an easy video that I could be doing really quickly and it would be done until I realized it did not work because I actually had in plan to make one of the I wanted to make um what is it called again a, an air launch thing kind of like the um starship 2 what is it spaceship 2 I don't know the the virgin Atla the virgin atlantic <laughs> virgin galactic one you know like the yeah thing i wanted to make one of those until i realized everything went horrible like the the ship just didn't work so i had to do something else and that's when i found out that this week's weekly challenge is actually going to kerbal so yeah you are basically told to make a sort of replica of the parker solar probe and send it to kerbal so that's what i'm doing this is my submission i'll I don't know how to submit it, but maybe I need a hashtag. I'll just, I'll look into it a little bit deeper. But this is my submission, and we're going to Kerbal using a probe. So you can see me building it. It's definitely nowhere near the... Let's actually look at a picture of the Parker Solar Probe. No, I don't want to go into Microsoft Store. Let's look at the Parker Solar Probe. Let me type, oops. Parker Solar Probe, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, mine is so different. Because actually, for some reason, I put the the satellite dish on top and everything on top of Technic and the heat shield on underground. Underground. At the bottom. But actually, the heat shield is at the front and everything else is at the back. Okay, that's weird. Okay. Oh, I'm about to burp. I just had some coke. <laughs> So basically, I just messed up everything. So I'm not even gonna win this. I, I can't even submit this because this isn't this isn't even a recreation of the Parker Solar Probe. This is a, a solar probe. So I named it the Helios Solar Probe X1000. Oh, well, I wrote just 1000. It's a model 1000 of the Helios Solar Probe. That's what I tried to say. So yeah, we're gonna color it orange because the sun is orange. Technically, the sun isn't orange; it's actually white because like the sun emits all colors of basically it emits um all colors on the what's it called again on the v oh yeah we're launching now. Well, I'll talk about that later. There we go. We launched, and actually, interesting thing is I actually left out most of the like reboots and things because usually i would cut out all the quick save loading but this time i felt like you know what i'll just show it because yeah i i i'd expect you guys to enjoy watching me suffer because this launch was really annoying for some reason i don't know why don't ask me but there we go we loaded a quick save so yeah the sun is technically white because it emits all colors of light and when you merge all these colors it becomes white white light but we say it's orange because that's what it looks like on the infrared scale like when you say heat the heat of the sun itself is like orange like don't even ask me what I'm trying to say but it's, it's I forget it. it it's orange let's just say it's orange the lower sun forget it forget it forget it we, we're still launching this is Take number three, I think. It's also extremely warm in my room because usually I've got the aircon on. I'm scared you guys might hear the outside noise because, like, yeah. <laughs> but 
yeah, hundred. And so I might have to redo this entire commentary. That will be depressing. Wait, I didn't turn on my aircon because I realized whenever I turn it on, it makes really loud like mm, <laughs> sound. So this time I tried turning it off, and it's extremely warm in here because I've got I'm in a very small room, and it is hot. But we're halfway down the video, so it just should be tolerable. So, next bit is um, getting to orbit. So, let's get to orbit. So, I made a maneuver node already. And let's deploy the fairing. And oh my god, I love how the fairings deploy. Like, it just suddenly just falls. Instead of drifting out into the vast expanses of space. Expansive. The vast expanses of space, it just falls. That is very realistic. But there we go, we are now circularized around Kerbin. So we're now gonna start our burn. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about this, about my menu. So actually, if you didn't know, if you just point retrograde down towards the sun from Kerbin, it will cost you a lot of energy. Although it might... Although, although it might seem like it would be very cheap to do, you do need to remember that the sun isn't just floating there. You are actually orbiting around the sun, so you have to basically, you basically have to um like what's it called again? I forgot. You basically have to lose all this excess energy that Kerbin has given you. Like, Kerbin is orbiting the sun at about. 6.9 kilometers per second so you're gonna need 6.9 kilometers per second to get down to the sun and that is a huge amount of delta a, a huge amount of uh, energy but there's a cheat code if instead we raise our orbit to be up to about joules height and then we point retrograde at joules height we're only be you we're only gonna need a fraction of the delta V. Though I do need to check um K K whoops K S B two whoop two three K S B two joule orbital speed. What is it? Joule is only um travels at about four point two kilometers per second. So we're only gonna need like I don't know how many but like we're gonna need a fraction of the delta V we needed if we were doing this at Kerbin's level. So yeah, we saved a lot of fuel by just going up to Jules height. So that's the cheat code I was trying to say. So there we go, we're already... I, I forgot to talk about the burn. I split the burn into two pieces to, s to save as much delta V as possible. So... Let's now do our retrograde burn to get down to solar height. So it's still a pretty large burn. Both of these burns were really large, about 2,000 meters per second each. But it's more efficient. It's still cheaper than Kerbin, if, if you were doing this at Kerbin's height. So great, I guess. So I'm slowing down. So one of the rules of the thing, what the thing, of the challenge was getting down to under one gigameter at the sun zone. So I checked that and it was a hundred thousand kilometers. One gigameter is a hundred thousand kilometers. So in the end I decided to be smart and decided to go with 75,000 kilometers. Like I'm going even deeper into the sun's atmosphere. I meant Kerbal's atmosphere. And you know what? I went even deeper after that. After that, I just decided to crash myself into Kerbal to see what would happen. And oh my god, this is bright. You, you probably can't see anything. It's so bright. But now that we're getting close to Kerbal, everything looks more sensible. Yeah, now it looks... Yeah. It looks better. And let's take some screenshots. This will probably be the... This will probably be the thumbnail, just a black thing hovering above a very bright red circle. It's not even red, it's orange. Oh my goodness. Red and orange are completely different. If you mix red and yellow, you get orange. Okay, I'm getting off topic. 
So we are now diving into the sun. Oh my god, is this scary. The sun is very warm, but of course, you do need to remember that in KSP2 we don't yet have any re-entry heating. Though, the next patch, patch 4, which will be coming out August 22nd, will be finally introducing re-entry heating. So that's exciting. But right now, at the in this current stage of the game, there's no re-entry heating, which means that all of our equipment is extremely heat resistant. And when I mean extremely heat resistant, I mean like, yes, very heat resistant. Like, you don't understand. In real life, this wouldn't exist. But we still have a heat shield, but I didn't deploy it yet because it's a surprise. Because I didn't leave it in the time lapse because I did that off camera accidentally. But we're now going to burn retrograde to lower our apoapsis like that's gonna be like that we're gonna reach our apoapsis faster just cuz like yeah <laughs> okay and oh if if you can see can I can't see cuz the previous screen is really small but we are currently c traveling at I think 82 kilometers per second that's my guess and um yes but can I see if I'm gonna I'm gonna need to squint into the screen. Yeah, 82 kilometers per second. That is in what is it? Eight kilometers? I don't even know. 82. Let's just say 82. Ki that just sounds so insane. Oh, it is 82 kilometers. Oh my god, we are traveling so fast. And at, uh, and at our apoapsis, we're traveling at a thousand two hundred meters per second. But there we go, we now have a colliding trajectory into the sun. And we're gonna find out what's in the very deep sun. So we've deployed our engine stage and we now have our tiny heat shield compared to the, the complex and fragile materials and the that satellite dish, which is practically useless. But there we go. Ooh, it's bright and blinding. And let's now take a screenshot, because this will be the th thumbnail. Trust me, it will be the thumbnail. Oh, I didn't take it. Oh, oops. So, we are currently landing down. And, oh, it's scary. The bright orange is filling up my screen. It's getting progressively warmer, and we're going progressively faster. Currently traveling at 82,000 82, meters per second. We are extremely fast and will probably obliterate on impact. And woo, the brightness is taking over all our instruments. Our instruments are starting to fail. The immense pressure and the immense gravity just... Yeah, our ship just exploded. Oh well. Let's go back to the Kerbal Space Center and I guess that concludes our trip to Kerbal. So that was interesting, we got some science, and whilst you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell. On the left hand side is a video for you, on the right hand side is a playlist, and goodbye!